Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Like I, um, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, uh, very, uh, very happy to be here. Always great to get back to my school. And um, again, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm uh, Derek Harmon. I'm a 2008 graduate of uh, WVSOM. I grew up in a rural community, Bluefield, West Virginia. I'm sure many of you know where Bluefield is. It's about an hour and a half, half south of here. Um, parents are both teachers. Uh, grew up in a non-medical family. You know, I was going to be a teacher when I first went to the University of Charleston for undergrad and then switched after a couple couple years into biology and eventually came to WSOM. I, I learned first learned about the osteopathic school through the anatomy uh, lab tours that they were giving, which is funny because when I became the anatomy GTA, I, GTA, I was the one giving the tours. Um, but that's how I learned about the osteopathic school. Quickly learned that, you know, osteopathic medicine was probably the best fit for me. Um, applied, got in, and that's, you know, that's history there. Um, so they gave me a list of things to go through here. That's why I keep looking down, so, just so you know. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I went to residency at first at, at, at an MD residency uh, over at uh, University of Virginia in Charlottesville. Started out in psychiatry, thought that's what I wanted to do, and um, obviously that's why I chose that residency, but quickly learned that I wanted to do a little bit more. We had a, uh, uh, an in STEMI on the floor one night, and I was like, man, I wish I knew a little bit more about what to do, and uh, the psych ward. And, um, you know, I was. I felt that you know I needed to ch needed a change, so I, I ch did change. I ch changed to family medicine. Um, where I went was uh, Norton, Virginia, Wise, Virginia, that area, and um, it's a very rural community. Probably even more rural than here. Uh, we do have a Walmart, um, but uh, it is it, it's very rural community. Um, our hospitals where I went to residency. Uh, are very rural, rural, even more rural than uh, Greenbrier Valley, uh, with less specialties than that. Um, however, Kingsport and Bristol, which are major hospitals, uh, I got a lot of experience over there as well as, uh, you know, as, as the rural settings. But one of the reasons I went to Norton, because uh, I, you know, I had, you know, if you're going into family practice, you have a lot of programs to choose from, um, is because it was close to home, number one, but also it was a very rural setting. And um, going into medical school, um, I knew that I wanted to do family practice, switched midway through probably to psychiatry, but I knew that I wanted to do something in primary care. Uh, so a rural hospital was, was where I wanted to be. Um, you know, I, I'll talk about, you know, why to choose which residency in a little bit, but, um, you know, uh, you have to take into consideration where you want to practice, and I knew that I wanted to practice somewhere rural, and so I did a rural residency. Um, you know, uh, the benefits of rural practice, I guess I should talk about a little bit about that. You know, uh, Dr. Edelman and Dr. Uh, Boisfort hit on some really good points, but uh, the people and the patients are probably the biggest reason that I practice in a rural community. Um, you get to take care of the whole family. If one person sees you, then the rest of the family wants to see you if, if, if they like you. And uh, if you enjoy being independent, if you enjoy doing everything yourself, and I mean everything, uh, then you, you're going to like rural practice. Um, if you're somebody that says, oh, you have a headache, well, you know, I'll, 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 you know I, can, I can give you some Imitrex. If that doesn't work, well, go to neurology. If you like to do that, which, you know, there's a lot of doctors that don't like to treat things like that, um, then you, Rural care is not the best place because, you know, neurology, for example, takes about two months to get into. So what am I going to do? I have to treat that. Uh, we had a STEMI in my office the other day, and we flew them out, you know, helicopter from our, um, from our parking lot. So I had to treat that initially. Um, but if you enjoy building bonds with your patients, which I hope most of you do, um, because in rural practice, you have to get to know that patient. It's, it, you know, you can't just treat and treat. Um, you know, because like I said, you are treating the entire family and you are treating the entire person, of course. Um, you know, I, I think that everyone can echo here that, you know, the, the patients are really the reason why we practice uh, in, in rural health care. Um, you know, some, uh, as a residency program director, um, well, I guess I should rewind back. After I got out of residency, I went to practice in Logan County. 
uh, which I believe is a statewide campus for you guys. Very, very great place to train and stayed there for about two and a half years. And after, um, after about two and a half years, I got a job offer to go and be the program director at my old residency program. Uh, both of these places are rural, like I said. And uh, I jumped on that opportunity. I, was, I love academics, I love to teach. So I've been there for exactly two years, actually. Um, this is coming up on my second year as program director. And um, it is, uh, my, my advice for cho choosing a, a residency is, is, uh, has changed over the years. I used to think if you want to practice in a big city, then you need to go to a big city residency. And if you want to practice in a small town, then you should probably go to a small town residency. I don't think that happens to be the case, but I will say this, that if you really want to practice rural medicine, especially in the coal fields of Southwest Virginia or Virginia, you're not going to see workers' pneumoconiosis up in New York City. Probably not. You may see a lot of other things, but you're not going to see the, those types of pathologies that you're going to deal with uh, on a regular basis uh, in, in rural, uh, you know, America, in West Virginia, Virginia. Um, so, uh, so some advice for residency selection if you're choosing a rural residency. First of all, try to do an audition there. Everyone knows that. Try to do an audition wherever you're at. Um, and beyond the academics, beyond the didactics, uh, you all want all those things, uh, to, um, you know, to be set in place and and, and working well. Uh, you want to look at specialty board pass rate and everything. Um, make sure that the residents that you're wherever you're going are happy and that you like them. <laughs> um, you're going to be spending three years uh, plus with those folks. And if, if you don't like your residents or they're unhappy, then you're not going to be happy and you're not going to have a good residency. So that's probably the best piece of advice that I can give you is always look at academics, didactics, things like that. Um, but make sure that you're going to be happy there because you know, uh, you don't want to start jumping around um, you know, from residency to residency. And making a big move like that is a, um, you know, can be cumbersome. Um, Basically, uh, and I, I guess I would kind of like to end with um, with saying that uh, you know, rural healthcare is it, not only from a, I'm from a rural place, but rural healthcare, you know, it, it really uh, you, you go home very satisfied at night. You know, you don't have um, you know the, a lot of other experiences in medicine where uh, you know at, at the end of the day you know you've done a good job because there's so many people that you know. It, the entire family is saying, great, they'll bring you green beans, they'll bring you okra, <laughs> you know, uh, anything to make you happy, which is, uh, which is great. Hi, my name's Joni Stepp. I'm from McDowell County, West Virginia. I don't know how many people know where that is, but that is the most southern, most rural part of West Virginia. And from there, I went to Concord University for pre-med and then went to WSOM for, um, for med school and went to residency in Beckley um, at Access Health and from there I moved back to Princeton which is sort of where Concord is if you're not familiar with the area so I sort of went back to where I went to college and um, from there I chose to um, enter into a private practice with um, two OBGYN partners I'm family practice and so I was doing basically PAPs and birth control and and IUDs and things like that um, after about well really after about six months I decided I didn't love private practice but after a year I got out of it and I now work for Princeton Community in their um, family practice clinic so I'm not in the hospital but I'm, I'm employed by the hospital. I still do mainly women's care and um, children so I mainly see that but I do see men too. Um, I still do IUDs and explanons and birth control and pap smears and all that stuff. I don't do colpos and leaps anymore because that makes my administrator twitch when I talk about it. So we don't do that anymore. Um, but I really, I really love what I do. Um, I, I grew up in a rural town, as rural as it gets, and I come from a coal family, not a, a, not a doctor family. So um, me being back there, it's, it's just, it feels like home and it's, Every day I'm, I'm seeing people that go to my church and people that I'm seeing at the grocery store. And like he said, when you see somebody, you see the entire family. I mean, I've got grandma, mom, all the grandkids, you know, everybody. So I know your family history without even asking you before I type it because I know it because I see your family. But um, it's good, though, because I feel like I'm, 
I'm really doing what I was called to do. Like I'm really, I feel purpose in the fact that I'm treating the entire family, that I'm, you know, the person they really depend on. In the middle of the night, you know, they want to talk to you, even if it's the silliest little thing, they trust you and, you know, you're their their rural small town doc. So um, I'm a pastor's wife too in a small town at probably the biggest church in our small town. So I would say 60% of my patients are in church with me on Sunday, <laughs> which is awkward and awesome at the same time. <laughs> but, um, but that also plays a role in it that I get to do medicine the way that, that I want to, that I get to pray with patients and I get to say, you know, how's your grandma? Because I see her and I know that your grandma just got diagnosed with this or that. And so rural practices, I could never see myself doing anything else. Um, if it's even a thought in your mind to do it, I would say check it out and look at it because it's just, it's so fulfilling to know that you're helping people who don't have a thousand doctors and a thousand options. These people need you. Um, not saying anything about obviously non-rural practices, but it, there's just something so fulfilling about that for me. So, um, I guess I'll pass it on and let you guys ask questions if you have any later. Well, good morning. Thank you for inviting me to speak uh, this morning and be part of this, uh, this great panel. My name, again, is uh, Lorenzo Pence. Uh, actually, uh, I'm from this area. I grew up uh, in, in, in between Ronsford and, and Union, so most of my childhood was spent in Greenberg County and Monroe County. And my family, actually, uh, my mother comes from McDowell County. So, uh, so I spent a lot of time uh, in uh, Mercer, McDowell, and particularly Greenbar and, and Monroe counties. And of course, growing up in a rural area, and, and many of you, I'm sure, are from rural areas, you know what it's like to be in small towns. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everything about everybody. Uh, but they take care of everybody. And that's what's really, uh, I think, a, a, a unique thing, I think, within rural communities across America. Well, you know, when I started out, um, osteopathic medicine wasn't even anything I even knew about. Um, you know, I went to high school here, and I, I, um, I went to college at Bluefield State. I didn't really know anything about osteopathic medicine. Although my family doctor was a, was a DO, we didn't know that. We just knew them as their, our family doctor, and, and uh, not that we went a lot. Um, but it really wasn't something most of us knew about. The school was, it was pretty new. And uh, many of us, even the ones, and I was from here, I knew there was something going on here. I went to the community college that was actually on this campus for my first two years. And actually, the medical school was here, but really, no one really talked about what was going on on the other side of campus, per se. And a lot of us actually thought it was, it was a, like a research-type facility, which I guess you might say that, but obviously it was a medical school. It wasn't until I had a friend that actually uh, got accepted here, and I knew she uh, wanted to go to medical school, and she had actually went to Concord uh, before it was the university. And um, certainly when I heard that she got into medical school, and I asked her where she was going, and she told me she's going to Lewisburg, and I'm, I'm really looking puzzled at this moment. And uh, then she sort of gave me more information, and I started looking into it. Uh, originally, I thought about going into optometry because I had a, um, uh, my uncle worked for an optometrist in Welch, and I got to know them real well, and it was very interesting uh, to me, and I thought I may go that route. Um, and actually, uh, he was a mentor and, and was going to help me uh, uh, fulfill that, uh, sort of that dream. But then as I started learning more, I thought, I want to do more. And after I learned about osteopathic medicine and, and the philosophy of, you know, how we take care of patients and how we, you know, hands-on, I thought, boy, that sounds like the right thing for me. So I still remember my interview here at WSOM. Uh, obviously, it was a panel interview with uh, a number of professors and, and, and clinicians. Um, and there was an anatomist here named Dr. Roberts that was on that, that panel. And... Uh, any of the, some of the faculty here may remember, remember him, but um, certainly he was asking some questions and this kind of thing, and, and uh, he asked me if I had any questions. And the one thing I was always concerned about if I was going to come to medical school, would I, how could I, would I be able to go into the anatomy lab and actually work in, in that arena because I would not been around uh, any cadavers or anything. And he allowed me to do that. And it was, it was funny that that particular day, uh, my friend who was a year ahead of me, uh, went to her table, and uh, they were working in the in the thorax, and I think that day they were taking out the heart. And honestly, I could have stayed right then and just 
you know, could have stayed at medical school from that point on. So I knew this was the right thing. So I was, I felt very fortunate when we had the opportunity to come in, uh, get accepted here. Um, you know, looking at my family, no one in my family had actually ever went to college. Certainly my dad was a salesman and my mother was a homemaker. Uh, and no one really had any background in, in, in medicine or anything of that nature. So, uh, so I had a lot of questions by everyone, my family, everyone, based upon what, what is osteopathic medicine? And over the years, certainly was able to explain that in, in much more detail. But again, never a question about wanting to go uh, into osteopathic medicine, and certainly never a question wanting to go into rural practice, because this is the kind of area I grew up in. I could see myself in those areas, and I like the people uh, and how you, inter how, how you relate to those individuals. So now, back then, it's a lot different than it is today. You have a statewide campus, very uh, well-defined areas to go, lots of rotations in the state. We didn't have that back then. We had a few rotations we could do here. I did a rotation in the federal prison in Alderson in a nursing home rotation. But for the most part, we were out of the state. Every month or so, we were going from place to place. I think the longest stint I had was three months in Flint, uh, but most of them were one month. And we spent a lot of time in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Florida, different places where there was a lot of osteopathic hospitals at the time. Um, and of course, it wasn't just primary care, it was all the other specialties as well. But um, my idea was, ultimately I wanted to come back to West Virginia. I certainly would like to practice in a, in a small town if I could. And originally my idea was pediatrics. And uh, that's how I actually ended up in Toledo uh, at Parkview Hospital for my residency. Uh, had the f opportunity not only uh, to do my residency there, had the opportunity to meet Dr. Edelman there because we were residents together once upon a time. And, um, but the thing is, with pediatrics, which I love kids, I kept also wanting to talk to the parents. And so I thought, gosh, if you know, I can take care of the kids, but I, I'm sure I'd like to take care of the parents too. So that's where family medicine sort of came from. And I finished my residency there. I had no intent of staying anywhere in Ohio or anything. I wanted to actually get back to West Virginia, so I started looking for places here. But I was actually trying to look for some place sort of like this, the greater Lewisburg, Greenberg County, Monroe County area. And at the time, I just wasn't finding exactly what I was looking for. So I overshot the state and ended up in Shandoah County, of Virginia, which is very, very comparable to here. Uh, not, many, not many physicians and uh, certainly a very rural county and ended up in a, in a small town called Mount Jackson, um, was the only physician in town. And that was the norm back then. You finished your residency, typically then you go out and hang up your shingle in a, in a, in a small town, many times by yourself. I was the only doc in town. Uh, had hospitals to the north and the south of me that I, that I obtained privileges at. And actually got to fulfill that dream of taking care of people in a, in a rural area and got to actually do everything. The only thing I didn't do, I didn't do OB there because at the time, malpractice was so difficult for a family doctor to get, it was just too, too cost prohibitive. Um, so, but I got to do everything else, uh, both you know, hospital practice, obviously office practice, um, and then just taking care of the townspeople. And, and of course, you're part of the community, and all of you are gonna be part of communities wherever you are, uh, because you're gonna be that person everybody's gonna call upon, and, and that's just part of what we do, and it's wonderful, because you interface with everyone, and certainly we want you, want you to have those kind of experiences. Uh, you know, we were talking a moment ago where you may have a loaf of bread that comes, you know, somebody bakes a pie or something like that. You know, it was the same thing. Uh, pies sometimes would show up on our doorsteps. Sometimes they'd come to the office. Sometimes I'd find a watermelon on my, uh, on my steps uh, going home. Uh, and, of course, also people sometimes come by your house. Uh, oh, I didn't want to bother you at the office, but, you know, can you, can you look at this? I don't know if anybody else has had that experience or not, but I certainly did. Uh, but that's just part of being a, a community in a, in a small town, a rural area, and it's just so fulfilling. I, I just can't tell you how, how much fun that is. The other thing I got to do was I got to take my first students from here. Now, honestly, going into practice, I'd never really thought about 
any education other than the education I had, my less teaching others. But what do we do as doctors? That's what we do. We teach. We, we help people. So when I remember the school asking if I could, uh, if I'd mind taking a couple of students, it happened to be from sort of the northern part of West Virginia and actually in uh, that part of Virginia, uh, if they could rotate with me, sort of like the introduction to the to primary care rotations that I think many of you will do. And I said, well, sure. I'm not sure I know how to teach. Uh, they sent me a lot of information. Um, I asked questions of different people, like Dr. Foster was, was here at the time and, and Dr. Fisk, and, and um, that helped me uh, at least get started, and I had an opportunity to uh, teach some uh, WSM students, and I really liked that. Uh, never thinking where that may lead one day. And uh, a couple of years after I'd done that, uh, I had the program in Ohio start asking me to come back to be part of the training program there. I figured I'd be in, in Virginia or hopefully get back to West Virginia sometime. That was always my hope. And um, so finally, after a couple of attempts of them trying to get us to move back to Ohio to be part of training programs, we actually did that. And I, I will say that probably changed my career path to some degree, but it really engaged me in the whole academic process. And what I'm going to tell all of you, irregardless of what you do and where you may actually end up going to practice, you want to prepare yourself and do all these things. I am convinced that I wouldn't be sitting right here talking to you guys this morning if I hadn't had that opportunity to be in real practice, do the things based upon what I was um, accustomed to at the time, and where I grew up, working with people, because that helped me so much as I've moved forward uh, in, in, in my career path. And we don't always know what that's going to be. I certainly didn't plan it out this way. Um, but those opportunities came, and, and, the, and the skill sets that you develop in doing all these things sometimes can lead you a lot of places. You never know where that opportunity is going to come. So that's sort of how, how I ended up in the academic uh, portions of things. Also, I had opportunity to work within the inner city because there's also needs in the inner city areas, very much like rural areas. Um, and sometimes that's surprising. Some of the things are so similar. You just you think that there's not the same issues, but sometimes there are. They're unique issues. Um, but that actually gave me uh, a lot of experience. Then having the opportunity to uh, uh, work at o Ohio University as a regional dean and ultimately to, to be a, a program director and, 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 and a DME in, in big, bigger programs, that helped lead me back to here where I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to come back to West Virginia, but it helped me bring me back because um, I knew what it was like here. I, I certainly grew up here wanted to give back to the community as, as much as I can and certainly wanted to see others be able to do things that they want to do. And I uh, was very fortunate that I actually got to be part of this RHIs as we got it started. And I, I'm assuming that there's still things are going on to make sure that you have the opportunities to go out and, and uh, visit with various industries. Um, you know, uh, a couple before I went to uh, Chicago for my current position, um, you know, Janet had me in a coal mine, you know, you know, and I grew up here and of course family that were associated with that, particularly from McDowell County, but I'd never had those experiences. And it gave me such a perspective as I'm sure all of you, as you guys have these opportunities, it's, it gives you such a perspective of these different industries, um, that will help you later in how you take care of your patients. So there's so many good things that are going on here and y'all are part of that. Uh, and it's gonna pr prepare you very, very well. When you go out and you're ready to go out on uh, rotations, you're gonna be prepared. When, you be when you're ready to, to choose your residencies and, and you definitely wanna choose the things that you have an interest in. And some of you already have an interest in certain areas. But I would also say keep an open mind because when you get on those rotations in the third and fourth year, you're gonna have a lot of experiences. And, and I've seen a lot of students over the years actually um, you know, going in a direction that they never thought they would go because they found something that they enjoyed so much um, that they never expected to, to enjoy. Um, and they just can't get enough of it. So keep an open mind, focus on the areas that you're certainly interested in, but keep an open mind on, on, on things as you go out. I learned sort of early on, 
you know, I love kids. I love taking care of adults. But surgery just wasn't my cup of tea because it seemed like you, you had to stand in a certain area for hours upon end. Whereas other classmates of mine, they absolutely love that. So you're going to find those niches that you really, really, really like. But, you know, for me, it was, it was all about primary care. It was all about ultimately um, ending up in a, in a, in a rural area. Um, so when, when the time comes and you have to make those decisions and you pursue something, pursue something that you're going to really like, because I tell you, it's really fun to get up every day and enjoy what you do. And, and you run into a lot of people that sometimes aren't as, they're not as, fun, they're not as happy about what they do every day, but I can honestly say I've always enjoyed what I've done, and I can't imagine doing anything else. And you guys are part of the greatest profession. You just, the, the camaraderie, what you'll learn, what you'll give back to, to your, your communities is just, just incredible. And they'll give so much back to you as far as, um, you know, how you interface and, and how they interface with you. There's, it's, it's sort of like those uh, credit card uh, commercials. It's priceless. You just, you just can't. It's hard to even sometimes even uh, describe. So, again, that's sort of uh, that's sort of my story, in the sense. But you guys are in the, in the in the best place, and you're going to be well prepared as you you move forward. Uh, I would I'd like to follow a complaint as to how in the world I have to follow this guy uh, with with that kind of resume. Uh, Tom Takubo, I'm uh, one of the graduates, as they said before, from 1999. Um, they want us to tell our story. Well, I, I was from the Logan area, or L.A. I guess that's an old, I started to say that, but I figure that's an old joke that probably still goes on around here. But, um, um, you know, when I was growing up, we, we had a D.O. in our community, and some of these guys in the back will remember Randy Short, um, just a great, great guy. And I, I remember very vividly, for some reason, I just always knew I wanted to be in medicine. Um, something attracting you. Back then, we didn't have a lot of TV shows and stuff that kind of glorified it. But um, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. And and when you saw Dr. Short walking around town, I mean, he was just admired by the, you know, I was from a, a small town in Logan called Chapmanville. Uh, you know, even now, the girls in the office will joke, uh, patients will come in and see my name. It's actually Tamagelo. Uh, and so the patients will say, um, now, am I going to be able to understand him one night again? And so the girls will say, well, if you can speak Japanese, because that's, you know, he's got his Logan accent still. But um, but you watch this guy walking around the small town in Chapmanville, and, and, and he was just admired. Everybody looked up to, to Dr. Short, and when, when you went into his office, you felt like you were the most important person in the town. I mean, he he cared, He but took forever. You had to wait two, three hours for an appointment, but, but you didn't mind when you got in there because, you know, he didn't want to just know about what your symptoms were. He, he wanted to know about your, your mom, your dad, even though they weren't patients of his. Um, you know, what's been going on with you. He'll know what your hobbies are, and, and, and that just speaks volumes. You, you can't, there's not a price tag or a number that you can put on that type of interaction. Uh, so from the get-go, uh, he was a DO. I, you know, I'm going to go to medical school. I'm going to be a DO. Um. Because I had an interest, you know, one of my buddies said, hey, you know, there's an EMT program. I was like, what's an EMT? Well, that's an emergency medical technician. So senior year of high school, we, we decided to take a little community class, and, and uh, we became the two youngest EMTs in the state of West Virginia. We actually had to wait. You have to be 18. We actually had to wait a little bit to take our, our, our exams uh, because you, you had to be 18 to take your exam. And so uh, I attended Marshall University for undergrad, um, and all during that time, uh, we would work summers instead of, um, you know, working at the mall and things that other kids did. We we would work on an ambulance squad and, and um, seeing some pretty hairy stuff, and it, and it was just exciting. Um, we all had to have elective hours, and so a paramedic program opened up at Marshall. And so I said, well, you got to have 20. I was a chemistry major. You have to have 20 hours. Uh, I took that paramedic program, which gives you a little more advanced uh, training. You know, you're you're running cardiac arrest and intubating and uh, running codes and doing ACLS and all those things. But again, it just reaffirmed what I wanted to do, and and I always knew I wanted to come to Lewisburg. Uh, so fast forward, you know, I go to um, to Lewisburg years ninety five through ninety nine, graduate, um, go to uh, Charleston. Now the plan was. Um, 
after that EMS experience, boy, you know, you, you're, you're rolling in there and you're talking, you're getting relationships with ER docs. Boy, I want to do ER. That just, that's the next step for me. You know, I, I want to be a physician. You see those ER guys. And so I thought about doing that. And then when I started my intern year, um, I was applying all over. I was going to go uh, out of state and do ER residencies, looking at programs, talking to them. But things change in your life. My dad got cancer. Um, I was very close to my dad, and I didn't want to be away. I know he had been a coal miner. My mom was a teacher. Uh, on top of having you know bad lungs from 42 years in the coal mines, he had lung cancer now. So my point is, life's life's going to throw you some curveballs, and and that's okay too. And um, so I readjusted, and I decided to do internal medicine. You know, stay at home at the time. Charleston now has an ER residency, but at the time they didn't. And so um, I did internal medicine, stayed close to my family. Dad passed, um, and then the decision is what to do. Well, my advice to you guys is, is, is I think your, your profession is likely to pick you more so than you picking your profession. You know, when I was a medical student, for example, uh, surgery is always fun and exciting. You guys get to scrub in and, and you know, all kinds of uh, you know, nerves are, are on in because you're doing things, you're seeing things. This isn't just a cadaver. This is a live person that... Um, uh, looked good a few minutes ago. Now they're on multiple machine, machines, drips, and split open, and, and you're playing with their insides. Um, so that's exciting. And when I would be on surgery rotations, boy, that was neat. But then I would always very distinctly remember looking down the hallway and seeing the medical teams walking down and, and hearing their discussions, and then they were understanding the physiology and fixing things. They understood things. Surgeons uh, work on things, but but the medical guys fix and understand things. And so when I was a be on surgery, I'd always look at the medical guys, and, and you'd want to listen in and, and hear because that's how you learn when you look at these abnormal labs and how you put all these pieces together to figure out what the patient's actually got. You can't fix them unless you know what the problem is. Um, but then when I'd be on medical team, you'd see the surgery guys, and they're doing some fun, neat procedures, and um, and that would be exciting. But But when I would go home in the evenings uh, and when I would go to read, it, it would be more medical stuff. You know, it wouldn't be looking up how to do a procedure, how to do an appendectomy, re rehashing the anatomy. For me, it was, was getting that internal knowledge of how these systems all play together, how they work. So, so as residency evolved, um, I just had a natural tendency to go towards critical care. Uh, to me, um, if I spent a 14-hour day in the hospital and I was in the intensive care unit and had some really sick people, boy, the time just went by. I mean, other people would be exhausted after a 14, 15-hour day, but but that was just exciting to me. So just pay attention to that and, and listen to what what your your soul is telling you, your conscience is telling you, because really that that program will pick you. Now, obviously, you guys have a an interest in rural health, and I can tell you, even though I practice in Charleston, which, you know, I don't really consider anything real rural or, or real urban in, in the state of West Virginia, but, but it's certainly more urban than a lot of the rest of West Virginia. Um, you'll never have any more um, um, importance. So you'll never have any more um, um, self um, trying to think of the word I'm really looking for, the, the, the internal gratitude that you'll have at the end of a day uh, that you'll have in, in primary care. I mean, these, these guys set up uh, far better than, than what I'm trying to um, elaborate on. But when you, when you take care of these families and, and you see the true appreciation and you see not only from the family side but from the doc side. So we'll have referrals from, from docs in Charleston, but... But it's the guys out in, in Boone County and Mingo County, that, and I give my numbers to all these guys, and they call me up, and, and it's you know 7 o'clock in the evening, and they've seen something going on, and, and they're concerned about that patient. I mean, when you get a little bit more urban areas, you, you do become a little bit more of a number. Um, that's not the case when you're doing rural medicine. I mean, these people are almost uh, like family more so than just a patient. So you're going to have a very, very unique opportunity to to be a um, a stamp in these people's lives that they will never forget you for. You'll forget it. You'll you'll not think twice about it because it'll be common nature. That's what you do. 
but they will never forget the impact that you have on them or their family members. So you, you've got a very unique um, future ahead of you. Um, always remember, if, if ever in doubt, just, just do what the right thing is, and you'll never, never be wrong.